Hey, 24, welcome back. It was a couple months ago, City News did a story about a new podcast the Delta Police had put out called Bend, Don't Break, showcasing stories of the adversity uh, first responders experience on the front line. Well, now that we've had a couple months, we wanted to hear more about the impact. So the chief of Delta Police, Chief Dubois, joining us right now. Welcome Thank to you. Thank you. Welcome. And Constable Aaron Hill, uh, the uh, brainchild of the operation, fair to say? Uh, that's fair, I guess. Fair, yep. Yeah. Well, you put the idea out, and first things first, uh, when you heard the podcast, after you recorded and got the final cut, what were your personal reactions to, to seeing this come to life? I suck as an interviewer. You know, I <laughs> definitely, I mean, that's the truth. We're all our own biggest critics. <laughs> it's true. You, you know, it, the story was really raw. It was very real. We really enjoyed the way it came out. But certainly, I, I know that I will never be challenging any of those great newscasters on, on the news radio shows that we hear. Well, the thing I appreciate is the long form. And Aaron, you were the first subject really opening up about uh, the realities and challenges. And how has this really helped community, the personal responses you heard to sharing your story? Uh, well, it's been good for me, obviously, uh, hearing the response, uh, nothing but positive feedback. I've heard from people from Border Patrol, EHS, m many other police officers, and fire, and uh, it's all been uh, all been a positive this, uh, uh, feedback for sure, 100%. Well, you've invested the resources like we can see. This is a professionally produced podcast, and uh, your most recent guest, the former fire chief, Fort McMurray fire chief, Derek Darby Island, really opens up. You get a full hour. And I think the thing that stood out from this chat was the split-second decisions you need to make on the front line. And oh my God. what do you learn and take away from someone like uh, Mr. Allen of dealing with pressure situations and how you can get better at that? Uh, Mr. Allen was terrific, right? Going through the Fort McMurray fire situations, the decisions he made saved thousands of lives or could have cost thousands of lives. So to hear the decision-making process he went through and, and the struggles he went through personally after making those decisions was amazing. And it helps all of us to make better decisions as we go forward. And in those decisions, uh, some of those surround mental health. And uh, uh, Constable Hill, I mean, he talks about the idea that the resources for mental health support are out there, yeah. but the challenge is convincing people sometimes they need to use them. So how do you do that in a productive way with people you work with? Yeah, I think that's the challenge we talk about as first responders. We're we're kind of a pretty stoic group uh, as as people, and it's hard to get us to open up. And I think for me, that was one of the big reasons for this project is to get out there and show that it, uh, there is lots of healing, getting out there and telling your story, and and letting people know that they can do that as well. The stigma is incredible. Yeah. You know that goes along with this. When you're a first responder, you're not supposed to have emotions. So reducing that stigma, allowing people to know that they can go out there and get help, is it's actually revitalizing for them. I think that's an excellent point because anytime I look at the sacrifices you make on the front line, and then you go back to your regular life after your shift, I think how do you block that out? And I think the realness that comes across is sometimes you can't. And sometimes you need to ask for help, which you do. And uh, one a quick comment on one of your colleagues, John Jasmine, who stepped in with a split-second decision. For those that don't know, Chief DeBoer, can you update us on what happened and his health status now? Absolutely. John's a hero. So John was at Immaculate Conception School in North Delta, picking up his children after school. As a result of, of uh, picking up his kids, he saw a fight occurred between a man and a woman. And uh, during that fight, John decided that it was time for him to be able to step in and, and made a heroic decision and actually did a barrel tackle on the person that w was assaulting this woman. And as a result, I think he ultimately saved her life. So, But during that fight, he received three stab wounds, one in the upper chest and then two in the lower abdomen that could have been very significant. But he's doing okay, he's gonna have a full recovery? He's gonna have a full recovery. John was out of the hospital in less than 72 hours, so we're very proud of him. Uh, no internal injuries at all, and certainly he's on the road to recovery and getting out and about. Excellent. Possible future guest for the podcast? Absolutely. With a Absolutely. story like that? 100%. Yes. We were joking that that's the, not the way to get on the podcast, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> <laughs> that's dedication to the craft. Well, at least we know he's uh, going to have a full recovery. Gentlemen, thank you for this. Uh, we're going to put details of the podcast on our Facebook page as well. Definitely worth the listen. Uh, speaking of things worth the listen, after the break, we're going to update you on what is happening in Ottawa this